Right lads, so at the time of recording this, it has been about a year and a half since the Booster Course Pass first released, and to say we got more than we bargained for is by far an understatement. And I've been quite involved in the community as of late, so I'd like to go back and take a look at every little thing that happened in what I'd like to call the Booster Course Pass era. But to do that, we're going to have to go back to where it all started, on the Nintendo Direct of February 9th, 2022. What did you think? Here's some news for Mario Kart fans. Um, I'm sorry, did I hear that correctly? Many of you have been enjoying the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe game since its launch in 2017. Uh, yes we have, and it's been a damn long time. So, we've been working on remastering select courses from across the Mario Kart series, and we'll be releasing them as paid downloadable content. Please take a look at this trailer. Hold up now, what? I feel like I'm dreaming right now. Wait a minute, is that Toad Circuit? So yeah, completely unexpectedly, after five years of getting no content for this game, out of nowhere, Nintendo just announced they are doubling the game's track counts. And I will tell you, I did not have this on my bingo card, but what a lot of other people did have on their bingo cards was a brand new Mario Kart. So some people were a little bit disappointed with this. But from my perspective, I was just expecting Nintendo to ignore this franchise until the next console. So the fact we got anything at all, lo and behold, the content in this game getting doubled. I mean, I was over the moon with it. And as a competitive player, this definitely gave me the motivation I needed, which I was lacking a little bit back then. But yeah, the release date was revealed to be March 18th, so fans wouldn't have to wait that long for its release. And the hype was real for it when it did come around. So, on March 18th, the DLC finally dropped and everyone was gassed. Everyone was up at the break of dawn just to immediately update their game. People were even making Japanese accounts just to play the DLC a day earlier than anybody else in the world. Which one of my old teammates in Battle Brigade actually did, uh, shout out Statrium. I got to play the DLC a day early thanks to him. But, unfortunately, the launch of Wave 1 wasn't perfect. Flaws were immediately noticed. For example, the cars on Coconut Mall didn't move anymore. What's up with that, Nintendo? That was one of the lesser problems, though. The biggest problem that came out of the Wave's release was the visuals were just not good enough. I mean, let's compare the grass on Shroom Ridge to the grass from a base game track. I mean, the difference is just night and day. And I mean, the fact on the Wii U's DLC, they were releasing tracks like Big Blue, Mute City, Wildwood, stunning tracks like that, on what is, to my knowledge, their worst ever selling console, is just baffling. So to a lot of people, releasing tracks of this quality on their best ever selling Mario Kart, to my knowledge, was just kind of unacceptable. So yeah, long story short, to a lot of people, lazily porting tracks from Tor just was not good enough for this game. But I mean, honestly, other than the disappointment in the track quality, there isn't too much to talk about in this wave, so as I'll be doing for every single wave in this video, I'm going to give you my personal thoughts on every single track individually. Okay, starting off is Paris Promenade. Honestly, quite a bad first impression for the tour tracks. Very, very boring, except for the few multiple routes you can take, and there are a few shortcuts you can take as well. Uh, Toad Circuit is the best track in the game, and I refuse to elaborate any further. Choco Mountain, a little bit like Paris, is a track that doesn't have much going for it, and it's just very, very boring. I will say the bats in that cave have caused me a few problems, though. Coconut Mall is pretty good. You can't really go wrong with Coconut Mall, except for the cars not moving, obviously. The only negative I'd give this track is it feels a little bit underscaled, therefore I wouldn't say it's as good as this version on the Wii. The Wii version of Coconut Mall still stays on top. Tokyo Blur is a little bit like Paris, except there's a NISC you can do on lap 1 and 2, so it's a little bit less boring, I guess. Quality of the grass aside, Shroom Ridge is actually pretty good. Definitely the best traffic track we had in this game so far, but I mean, it was competing with Toad's Turnpike, so, so that's not really saying much. Sky Garden is just kind of mid, but I honestly think if they did actually implement anti-gravity into this track, they could have done so much more with it, but we didn't get that unfortunately, we just got the tour port. Ninja Hideaway was definitely the standout of Wave 1. I mean, it's so fun to play and it has a relatively high skill ceiling as well. It also has so many different routes you can take, so it probably makes it the most explorable track in the game. Overall, the take from this wave that the track should have been so much better, especially in quality. And for the most part, Nintendo listened when it came to Wave 2. So, after a long wait, on the 4th of August 2022, Wave 2 finally dropped, and immediately improvements were noticed. Firstly, 
The quality is slightly better. Yippee. Now, I only say slightly because the track quality definitely was better, but it still didn't live up anywhere near to the base game. Also, anti-gravity was back. I forgot to mention this while talking about wave one, but there was absolutely no anti-gravity in any of the tracks, which is weird because that's quite literally what this game's gimmick is. But uh, yeah, on Sky High Sunday, it made a shock return, so we'll take that. Also, Sky High Sunday was a completely original track sort of. See, Nintendo did advertise this track to be completely original, but it was data mined way before that this track was actually meant for tour. But they did add this track to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe first, so I guess you could count it as an 8 Deluxe original track if you want to. But yeah, there isn't too much to add other than the tracks are definitely getting better. But my personal favorite thing to come out of this wave was definitely the shortcuts. Now, this game has always been known for how strict Lakitu is. You know, games like Mario Kart 64, Mario Kart Wii, you could pull off these absolutely crazy ultra shortcuts. But in this game, if you tried anything like that, Lakitu would grab you by the scruff of your neck and put you back on the track. But yeah, these big shortcuts that you can do are on Snowland and Mushroom Gorge, which we will get into when we talk about the tracks, which I will do right now. New York Minute is a solid track and definitely an upgrade from the tour tracks in Wave 1, just having a lot more to do on it, basically. Mario Circuit 3 was absolutely the stinker of this wave. I mean, they could not have picked a worse track to faithfully remaster. Calamari Desert was an okay track, and for the first time since the N64, we got to drive on the train tracks now, which is pretty cool. Waluigi Pinball is just a great track. You can't really go wrong with it. I mean, it's a fan favorite. Sydney Sprint was an amazing track, really helping the tour track show up in this wave. Massive upgrade compared to Paris and Tokyo from before. Snowland is a decent little GBA remake, but having that massive shortcut that skips that entire massive U-turn just makes it all the better to me. Mushroom Gorge was always going to be great, but it's especially good because they left the gap jump in the game, which with how strict Lakitu is in this game, many fans were just expecting them to leave out, but they actually kept it in, so mad respect for that. And finishing off the wave is Sky High Sunday, the quote-unquote original track. Now, the concept for this track is pretty good and it could have been very very good but the only problem is this track only has two turns so there's not much going on other than driving straight and tricking really now so far i've not had much to talk about other than what the community thought of the tracks and what i thought of the tracks but coming up to these next waves, trust me, there's going to be a good bit more to talk about. Because Nintendo started to not only add tracks to the game, but started to make changes to the game itself. So getting into Christmas time on December the 7th, Wave 3 dropped. And as they did for Wave 2, they started to really up their game with the visuals on these tracks. I mean, tracks like Boo Lake, Maple Treeway, and Rainbow Road looked absolutely stunning. The only bad apple in terms of visuals in this wave was Alpine Pass. They definitely could have done a lot more with that track. So overall, the tracks in this wave were pretty good, and we'll talk about them in more detail later. But first, we need to talk about some of the unexpected changes they made in this wave. Firstly, they added a custom items mode, which, my god, is such a good quality of life feature to have. Like, for example, let's say you want to test out the bill strats on a track. Now you don't have to go in the back and fish for one, you can just stick on bills only mode. And if you did want to test out the bullet bills on a track, it's a lot less time consuming to do so now. That is not the only change they made, they also made it so iframes became a vehicle stat. Now, let me explain. So iframes in this game is basically what stops you from getting comboed into oblivion after getting hit by something. And before this, every single vehicle would be invincible for the same amount of time after getting hit. But with this change, they made it so some vehicles got more iframes than others. Most notably, they made it so Waluigi Wiggler, the by far most used combo at the time, had the least amount of iframes or one of the least amount of iframes as far as I'm aware, which was seen as Nintendo's attempt to nerf the combo and try and get it out of the meta play. Which, I mean, this probably was caused by Timmy on Reddit with 20 hours in the game going, or oh, I see Waluigi Wiggler in my worldwides too much and I'm sick of it. Which is an absolutely terrible mindset to have, which I could make a whole video on, so I'm not going to talk about it here. But yeah, ultimately Nintendo's attempt to nerf Waluigi Wiggler didn't really do anything. Because Waluigi Wiggler having the best combo of speed and mini turbo heavily outweighs the iframes. Now keep in mind that I said this when we talk about Wave 4. But yeah, with that out of the way, let's get into the tracks of Wave 3. 
London Loop. Putting my UK bias aside, I think this track's all right. I wouldn't say it's as good as the Wave 2 tour tracks, but it's definitely better than the Wave 1 tour tracks. Boo Lake is an excellent track and definitely a massive visual upgrade if you compare it to something like Sky Garden. Alpine Pass or Rock Rock Mountain, depending on where you're from, could have been great, but the forest section and the way it looks really lets it down in my opinion. Maple Treeway is solid, looks solid, plays solid. I don't have much more to say about it to be honest. Berlin Byways is in the same situation as London Loop in my opinion. It's definitely better than the Wave 1 city tracks, but I don't think it's as good as the Wave 2 city tracks. Peach Gardens was already a good track, but the fact you could go backwards on lap 3 definitely makes it 10 times better in my opinion. Merry Mountain will definitely get you in that festive mood, but other than that the track's pretty boring if I'm honest. 3DS Rainbow Road is amazing and Everyone expected that, to be honest. Many do consider it to be the best Rainbow Road in the series, and playing it in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe HD graphics just makes it all the better, really. So yeah, the one thing to take from the tracks in this wave is that they have been getting better and better so far, and I'd definitely say that trend continued with Wave 4. But not only were the tracks good in Wave 4, but some of the changes they made in Wave 4 changed the game forever. So in just about three months after Wave 3 released, we got Wave 4 on March the 9th. And I think I should immediately talk about the elephants in the room, and that is that Waluigi Wiggler died in this update. Nintendo did not necessarily nerf him, but they just made other combos better. Every single character under the weight class of Waluigi got at the very least a speed upgrade, with some classes also getting a mini turbo upgrade on top of that. Those weight classes specifically being the Mario, Yoshi, and Luigi weight classes. And two carts also got a big speed and mini turbo upgrade, being the Teddy Buggy and the Ink Striker, which basically meant a combination of any of these characters and any of these carts had a higher speed and mini turbo combination than Waluigi Wiggler. So yeah, that was the new meta, and Waluigi Wiggler had just outright worse stats than these combos now, so there was absolutely no reason to use it. Now, of course, every online player eventually adjusted to this change. Everyone got used to the Yoshi and Luigi Mario weight classes. But unfortunately, this did do irreparable damage to the time trial scene. Because now there were just faster combos you could use in the game, world records that were maintained for years were beaten in a couple of days. Which I'm not much of a time trialer, but from their perspective, I can completely understand the frustration. I mean, imagine a top level time trial player putting all their time and effort into a practically unbeatable world record just for it to get beaten in a couple of days just because of an update to kill the meta which as i've said wanting to kill waluigi wiggler because they keep on clapping you up in worldwides is a terrible mindset to have and unfortunately time trailers had to pay the price for that but yeah overall that was just a crazy change for nintendo to make and i don't think anybody could have predicted it anyways while i was talking about that i completely forgot to mention but they added a brand new character to the game being Birdo, which was completely unexpected by the way. And there were also some empty character slots added to the character menu, so we went from just being promised tracks to getting new characters now, so full respect to Nintendo for delivering more than what they promised. But adding Birdo to the game definitely had something to do with the character changes, because Birdo has the same stats as Yoshi, and Yoshi got by far the biggest upgrade out of any of the characters. So it's as if Nintendo definitely wanted to see Birdo in play a little bit more when going online. Anyways, yeah, this change was pretty crazy, but I've waffled enough about that. I think it's about time we get onto the tracks because there are some good ones in this wave. Amsterdam Drift is pretty awesome. From this point forward, they were giving us a lot more to do and see on some of the city tracks. The only bit of criticism I'd give it is that the underwater section can be a bit weird sometimes. Riverside Park is very, very good and the track looks stunning and it really showed us what Nintendo can do when they actually try try with this game's graphics. DK Snowboard Cross or DK Summit, depending on where you're from, is an absolute custom track and that's why I love it. Yoshi's Island, the so-called original track, which was meant for tour originally, is amazing. Probably my favorite out of Wave 4. They absolutely nailed it with this one. It looks stunning. It's really fun to play. The gimmick of running into the cloud and getting the top path is also super, super fun. I just love this one, honestly. Bangkok Rush is very, very good. The tour tracks just keep on getting better and better. They just nailed it with this one, really. DS Mario Circuit is definitely the worst track in this wave, but that's not even saying much. I still think every single track in this wave is solid, which includes this track. I mean, it's a Mario Circuit. It's not going to be that good, but it's definitely one of the better ones they could have picked, so I still 
still think it's alright. Waluigi Stadium is amazing. Waluigi Wiggler got taken out of the meta, but at least he got his own track back in the game, and it looks absolutely stunning. I mean, if you compare this to a Wave 1 track, again, the difference is just night and day. They've really stepped up their game in terms of the visuals. And finishing off the wave is Singapore Speedway, which is amazing. Might be the best tour track in the entire game. It's just stunning, and there's just so much going on. There's so much to look at. And I mean, not to mention, it's very, very fun to drive as well. So yeah, I'd say other than the controversial meta change that they made in this wave, they knocked it out of the park. The tracks are just amazing. So let's take a look at wave five, and I'll just say they did not stop with the character changes in this one. So on the 12th of July, 2023, wave five dropped, and the first thing everyone immediately thought was what character changes did they make this time? In which they made one. They gave the Villager Boy class one extra point in Mini Turbo, which actually put them on par with the Yoshi class. But unfortunately for the Villager Boy class, they were lacking a little bit in traction, so people still prefer to use the Yoshi class. Oh, by the way, by this point, it had been firmly established that Yoshi Teddy Buggy Rollers was the best combo in the game. Now, Nintendo did make some other changes to some other carts and wheels, but not enough to change the meta at all, so it's not really worth talking about. But something I haven't done enough in this video, I think, is I'd like to have a look at the competitive scene and see what's been going on. Because of course, thanks to the booster course pass, the competitive scene of this game definitely received a lot more traction and in the wave 5 era we actually had the biggest ever ffa mario kart tournament being ragnarok hosted by jp Givener, which uh, i made finals for by the way with the prize pool being around ten thousand dollars which is a lot of money to put to put it lightly but yeah overall the tournament was a big success which we might not get to see again thanks to nintendo's new tournament regulations but i mean i guess we'll just have to wait and see in the future oh and they also added three new characters to this wave being Kamek, PT Piranha, and Wiggler. Uh, fun fact, Wiggler on the Wiggler would have been meta if Nintendo didn't make any balance changes. I mean, the absolute state of that. But yeah, that's just about all there is to talk about, so I say it's time we get onto the tracks. Athens Dash is definitely great. Again, Nintendo definitely stepping up their game with the city tracks in this game. Daisy Cruiser is okay. That's always what I've thought of the track, and they haven't really changed much about it, so my opinion stays the same. Moonview Highway is solid. I mean, the track looks stunning. The music is amazing. The only problem I have is how slow the track feels, even with all those boost panels they added on. Squeaky Clean Sprint, again, another track that was made for tour, but they added to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe first. And this track is amazing, dude. It's definitely the most creative track in the entire booster course pass. Los Angeles Laps is pretty good, although I will admit adding the oil field was a little bit weird. I don't know why they did that. Sunset Wilds was such a disappointment. I mean, the sun doesn't even set on that track. And honestly, with the quality of this track, we're going back to wave one. Cooper Cape is just as good as it was on the Wii. Very, very good track. Although getting the underwater section from the 3DS instead of the Wii does suck and does dumb down this track a little bit. Vancouver Velocity is a very good track. I don't quite like the ice rink bit of this track but i mean everything else looks stunning and plays amazing so yeah overall wave 5 was absolutely solid not many mistakes other than sunset wilds was a little bit of a letdown but yeah going into the final wave of the booster course pass people were wondering if they were going to make any more changes to any of the characters because most likely the changes they make to wave 6 that's going to be final that's going to be it for this game so without further ado let's take a look at it So just recently on November the 9th, Wave 6 released and that was it, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was finished. Now I won't be talking about the tracks in detail because I've already done that in the video I made about Wave 6 when it released, but long story short, I think all the tracks are pretty solid and I'm just happy Nintendo learned from their mistakes of the past from Wave 1 and really started to produce some bangers in the later waves. But of course this is most likely the last update this game is going to get, so Nintendo did make quite a few big changes to seal it off. And no, before you ask, there were no character changes, so most likely the meta is going to stay Yoshi Teddy in this game. So firstly, we have a music player now, or a jukebox, whatever you'd like to call it, which is awesome. I love this game's soundtrack, so I definitely think this was needed. Secondly, there are a bunch of free Mi suits that you can use now, which they have their own little trick animations they do if you trick off of anywhere that's in anti-gravity, which I mean, that's just cool to have. And lastly, Nintendo wanted to go out with one more controversial change, 
and that is the nerf they made to bagging. So basically now how it works is when you stop at an item set, once you get that third item, it is guaranteed to be absolute crap, essentially. Which the competitive community were pretty mad about this from the beginning, but it didn't turn out to be that bad and workarounds were found, most specifically by Mankalore, which he definitely ticked off a lot of the casual community with some of the tweets he made, which is quite funny. And of course there were four new characters in the game, which was actually a lot more than we were expecting, so shout out to Nintendo for that. We got Diddy Kong, Funky Kong, Pauline, and Peachette. I mean, adding fan favorite Funky Kong and then adding Wii Rainbow Road as the last track in the game, which are both fan favorites, was definitely a good way to finish off the booster course pass. But yeah, this wave, like the ones just prior, was very, very good. And Nintendo definitely ended it off well, so good job, lads. So, in conclusion, was the booster course pass good? I mean, it was amazing in my opinion. I mean, it definitely could have started off better. Wave 1 was definitely seen as quite a big disappointment. But we complained and Nintendo listened and some of the tracks we got in the later waves were absolutely stunning. And I'd say they were definitely base game level quality. And also the impact this has had on the competitive community. I'd definitely say it's seen some growth over the time of the booster course pass, which is great because I love playing this game competitively and I definitely think it deserves more recognition. And the level I've gotten at to this game, I definitely owe to the booster course pass because I don't think I would have had the motivation to grind out this game so much if there weren't a whole new 48 tracks for me to play. So my overall take on the booster course pass summed up in a sentence is nice job lads, you did good. That's all from me anyway. If you enjoyed that, subscribe. I'm trying to reach 1k hopefully and I will see you on the next one in a bit lads.